Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Janice with Stories That Inspire Us. And obviously we're live here today on my Facebook page and I have an amazing guest today. I'm so excited to introduce her. Corby Mitlide, the author, the self-development self person, clean out your life closet. Corby, before we hopped on, and by the way, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Before we hopped on, I, I think I briefly um, mentioned that I, I haven't had a chance to read your whole book, but I have been sifting through it. And I got to tell you, I was blown away. The first thing that blew me away, the person that wrote your foreword, David Bennett. Yes. One Dear thing, old friend. Uh, thank you for sharing that, because that was one of my questions. I was very curious about that. And he stated in something that he wrote, we are all searching for a sense of peace and understanding. And as I was skimming through your book, which is number one on my summer read list starting tomorrow, um, it really, you're very welcome. It really became very evident to me that your book was so much more than just self-development. And Good. I was wondering if you could just kind of elaborate and explain it obviously much better than I can. Well, the whole point is technically it's a self-help book, but self-help books for the most part are pretty toxic. Why? Because they all tell us, do everything I tell you and it all gets better. Well, no, it doesn't because they've never lived your life. They haven't been through your challenges. Uh, you get a book that says, well, you should avoid food with leptin and you have to get up at 4.30 in the morning and do yoga every day. And you're a single mom with preschool kids in Milwaukee and a job, forget it. So my gig is, here's some of the dumb things I did. Maybe here's a client story, here's some suggestions. But at the end of each chapter, there are the adventure pages with two, three, four questions you must answer from your own life. So by seeing that digging into your own life, you really already have your answers. It is freeing. It boosts your self-confidence. You stop assuming that you're just a victim that somebody else has to save. That's huge. It, it certainly is. And what I took away from, as I was reading um, parts of it and came upon, you know, after the chapter, what you were just stating about answering those self-reflection questions, Yes. Sometimes when um, when somebody goes to do that, for instance, as I was reading some of those questions, like you have to be totally honest with yourself. Yes. You have to, I guess, sometimes maybe dig deep or really feel what you're feeling. So you can maybe not do exactly what you did, but you're what you're describing is very relatable and you can make it relatable for what you're going through. Yes. When we're having somebody else fix us, it's like, I'm, I know a lot of people that have gone to psychologists, whatever, for years, but they're so smart. They know what the answer should be. And so they skim the surface. When you have to dig into your own life and no other answer will work, you find your vulnerability, which is not a bad thing. It's the soft places where we plant seeds and grow. And you understand it's all right to have failed, to have been dumb, to have done things that you regret now. It's not now. Learn from them and move on. The book is really also about complete self-forgiveness. I kind of got that feeling from it because the reflection part of it you know, I was thinking, for instance, different things that have popped up in my life. And as I was thinking of those things, maybe in my mind, answering that question, I was like, yeah, I really need to kind of forgive myself so that I can, you know, take it in, but more importantly, move forward and maybe start my own journey and path of that. And this leads me to one other thing that you said in your book which I believe you may have already stated. Yeah. Only one who has answers for me is me. It's not just mine. 
it's yours. Without your participation, this book is only half written. Corby, I think that's very profound on so many different levels. Uh, this is not to say that other methods can't help you get there. Right. Um, I worked for many, many years with a place called the Option Institute in Massachusetts run by Barry and Samaria Kaufman. Um, and their idea of stimulus belief response, always ask yourself the next question, I use to this day. But those tools would be sitting on the shelf, dusty, unless I use them directly for me. So it's not Bears and Samaria that are giving me my answers. I'm giving me my answers with the tools they shared. There's a big difference there. Oh, absolutely. Because I think, uh, you know, you were mentioning um, about all the books that you have collected throughout the years. Yeah. And I'm a book nerd myself. And I believe there is a word for that. Um, and the, the name escapes me, but what a bibliophile. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. And I have all those books. And but when I guess when you come across something that is maybe you don't know how to deal with it, you know, and you're feeling that anxiety, and you have all these books. Sometimes I, I feel that we're misleaded to believe, as you, as you said, and in, in you're open that, oh, if I read this book, if I read that book, I'm going to be all set. But if we don't, if we don't dig deep, we are not going to find that to um, make it so that it's our story, where is your book is very, is set up so, and it was comforting to see that is what I'm trying to get at. Thank you. That's exactly what I wanted for it. Yeah, it, it, um, it really, it made you think that, okay, I'm going through this thing or whatever it may be, and there is a way to work through it, but you know, Okay, for instance, I'm an early riser. I love the routine, but you know, sometimes our routines get messed up. So to give yourself that forgiveness and the reflection to move forward in such a way that it's cohesive all around. So that's pretty wild. I, I just, I can't wait to really dive into your book because I feel that I'm not doing it the justice it so well deserves. And I'm excited to start reading it. Are you working on a second book by any chance? Yes, ish. You <laughs> know what do I mean by that? Um, that book, Clean Out Your Life Closet, plus the other two that I've written, The Psychic Yellow Brick Road, and You've Got the Magic Who Needs a Genie, all coalesced through articles or blogs that I've written. I didn't sit down and say, I'm going to write about this. So these days, I publish almost daily on medium.com. And I have deliberately not activated the partnership program. So no, I'm not making money off it, but that means that anybody can read my stuff. And I'm going to see what pattern these articles come into. I've got like 115 up at this point. And they will then say, hi, we're a team. We want to be your next book. Boom. Then the work starts with my editor. We clear it out and we present you with a cohesive if you will, nest to hatch new ideas. Wow. And your book, um, Clean Out Your Closet, also had so many different um, people that wrote in their um, view of the book, their reading of the book, which I thought was ama amazing. And it, I was reading through them and I'm like, wow, that I got to you know, I know I, that I want to read your whole book, but I'm like, I got to put this book to the top of the list because I, uh, you're welcome. It was just really amazing to read through all these reviews. Um, where else can they, people find your book? Um, the book is on Amazon, but it's actually in three forms. You can get the paperback. Mm -hmm. You can order it on Kindle. But this book, I also did an audio book for, and I'm the one who's reading it couple of reasons. Number one, I believe that if someone who writes a nonfiction book has any kind of a good voice, they should be the ones reading it for you because they had the passion to write it. Secondly, 
I was a theater major at Brown University. I was a professional actress in New York. I got a voice. So I wanted to be the one to read it to you. But a lot of people who are audiobook people rather than reading, that's how they've gotten into it. And yes, you will still get the adventure pages and the questions. You lose nothing by listening. That is amazing. I I haven't heard of too many people that do that read their own books. So that's fascinating. When when the move inspires you to create something magical like for instance you said that you you're you have about 150 articles or so on medium do you write based off of um maybe you wake up in the morning and you say hey this is on my mind i'm going to write about this or is it about something relatable to your book it can be either one um one of the articles that I wrote recently, it was called The Intellectual Prepper. And that was on the idea of, there are so many books being banned and burned, shades of the 1930s, that, you know, preppers always get food and, you know, water supplies, blah, blah. You need to start buying a copy of each banned book that you see and putting it somewhere safe so that after this dark night of the soul that we're all going through, those books are still available. On the other hand, yes, I have also written things about um, this is how to get over stress. Uh, this is a great way to do a tarot card spread for this particular incident. Because remember, by profession, I'm a certified tarot master and a psychic medium full time. So you've got something from all of my grab bags life closet, psychic yellow brick road, what's on my mind today, and up it goes. Because for me, words are my drug of choice. I cannot get through a day without writing down something. I love that. And the passion when you said that was undeniable. When being a psychic me medium, mm -hmm. do you do that on a regular basis? Like, oh, you meet somebody six days, so six days a week, 14 hours a day. I read a thousand people a year, darling. You betcha. And I've done it full time since 9-11. Wow. I started reading when I was a high school senior in 1973. Wow. that That is amazing. When you're out and about, because then this may be, um, this is more of a, a curious question, I think. Mm -hmm. When you're out and about, as a psychic medium in maybe someone that you're just passing on the street and some, do, do people? No, nope. nope. I never do that. Okay. This is why people have seen the Long Island medium go up to somebody in the produce section of Wegmans and go, excuse me, your aunt Dora says you have a bull tire in the back. You're going to die in a car accident in two weeks. You get it. No, don't get it fixed. Just telling him walks away. That is bull. Number one, or PR people go out and decide which Wegmans. Then they interview people and have them sign legal model releases and then it gets re rehearsed six times. If anyone tries to come up and do that to you, that's called a drive-by psychic shooting. And you say to them, I refuse. Because even if someone has the ability to do that, generally they will do what the spiritualists do at Lilydale. Hello, my name is Reverend Corby. I believe I have a message for you. May I come to you with it? But if the answer is no, it's no. So the agreement I have with my guides so that people feel safe around me mm -hmm. is the closed sign is up unless three things. Number one, it's an energy exchange and you've paid me for a session. Or number two, we're bartering. You bring me a chicken. Or three, it is a gift and a pro bono on my part. That's it. That's why people trust me. And that's why people respect me as a professional, because I don't go wallowing in somebody's brain pan without permission. Thank you so much for explaining that. Um, I had a recent, well, I wouldn't say recent, it was a few, few months ago where, um, you know, having this great conversation with someone and they said, just out of the blue, and I'm glad they asked, but it definitely was kind of a weird question, but I know what your date of death is going to be. Would you like to know? And I'm like, no. Can I just, what you just did is hit the biggest red button I've got. Let me explain why. 
In several states, that is illegal. Number two, we don't have just one spot to leave. We choose four or five. We could be have a high fever at age four. We could be in a car accident at age 18, a mugging at 30, a bomb explosion at 46, and prostate cancer at 80. The soul decides as these nexus points come up, are we done yet or not? Example, I was in an accident that should have killed me. Rolled my car over, took down a tree, a telephone pole, electrical wires all over it, and I wasn't wearing a seatbelt and it was upside down. I walked away with a couple of bruises. If a psychic had said, I see you dying in a car accident, I probably would have died of fright. As it was, it felt like it was an e-ticket. My spirit guide said, she's not leaving yet. So no, no one should ever, ever predict a death. That's between you and God. And you don't need to have that worm put in your head. Exactly. You know, and I kind of forgot about it, but um, I'm glad that I shared that with you, you know, anybody that may be listening and, you know, hear that, like yeah. reach out to Corby and she'll, she'll set everybody straight. I mean, when I was 11, the boardwalk in Atlantic city, one of the fake gypsies said I was going to live until I was 89. And I still remember that. And that has been a comfort for me for many years, but now I'm 67. That feels like it's too soon. So I am taking my thought processes and saying, I will renegotiate my contract. Should I choose to at 89? <laughs> maybe I'll be done and maybe I won't. Exactly. But, you know. What future things do you see for yourself as far as um, not only your psychic abilities, but in the books that you've written, what is one thing maybe out there that you have left that you want to do? Or maybe it's something that's evolving and ever-changing. The more people I can speak to, the better. When you put me in front of an audience, whether it's 20 people or 200 or 2,000, um, you have plugged me into the thousand volt celestial wattage. You know, uh, if you're a Star Trek fan, I can see seven of nine getting plugged in and becoming the board queen kind of thing. Only I'm nicer than the board. Um, that's the thing. The more people I can talk to, the better. The more people I can share information with, but get them to laugh while they listen, the happier I am. I mean, I came very close to having my own reality show. But they said, and we'll tell everyone, nobody can do what you do. And I said, no, you can't do that. All my life, my mantra has been, I'm not special. You can do what I do. They said, oh, well, we're not interested and went and found somebody else. I'm not willing to compromise my truth for fame. So keep me reading. Keep me busy six days a week. Give me more audiences until I am on my deathbed and I am a happy girl. Wow, that is fascinating. Um, I see many, uh, and I am no expert at energy or anything like that, yeah. but I just see so many good things coming for you. I don't know. I just feel when you're talking about your passion and what you do, there's so much depth in it. And it's really just amazing to me. Now you mentioned, I just want to go back again, um, that your book can be found on Amazon, Kindle. And I think there was um, in your They're all on Amazon. It's all on. You can have all three forms, paperback, Kindle and audiobook there. And if okay. you happen to go to my website, you'll see order here and it'll take you right to Amazon. OK, that's perfect. And what is your website? Couldn't be simpler. CorbyMitline.com. That is fantastic. Corby, I want to thank you so much for being on today. I definitely have to have you back on again after I, I, I would love to have you back on. Definitely. Um, I want to read your book and get more in depth in it because we haven't even scratched the surface. There's so much yet to chat about. I just can't thank you enough for being on stories that inspire us. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Before we go, one thing. All of you out there who go, that sounds like a yummy book and you get it to read, please, please, please take a few minutes to leave a short review on Amazon. I am self-published and the way Amazon works, if you don't have at least 50 reviews, they shove you on the back shelf behind the pickles and we're not quite there yet. 
So you leave a review and from my heart, I thank you. Thank you so much. And yes, that is so true for self-published authors. Those reviews are that important. You know, there is a story within all of us and we have so much more to share. And I want to thank you all for listening today, maybe viewing this on in the future on, uh, on the website or YouTube, wherever you get your podcast from. Know that whatever's within your heart and your soul and reach out and share your stories that inspire us. My name is Janice and look forward for more Corby Mitleid on stories that inspire you, that inspire us. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Corby.